Okay, so for this lecture, we will, we will be discussing all about salivary gland tumors. We will not be discussing all salivary gland tumors. We will just be discussing some, sal some common salivary gland tumors or those that have significant, I think, significant in the practice, commonly significant in the practice. So we will divide this lecture into three parts, the benign, the malignant, and special topics. First stop is the benign salivary gland tumors. First of which is the pleomorphic adenoma, also known as the benign mixed tumor. This is the most common salivary neoplasm, which is composed of a mixture of a ductal and myoepithelial elements. If this is present in a patient, if a patient has this, it will present itself as a painless, slowly growing feral mass. It can occur at any age, any age, usually between 30 to 60 years old, and it has a slight female predilection. The most common site for pleomorphic adenoma is pale. So this is a clinical manifestation, extra oral, of a pleomorphic adenoma. Okay, this is adenoma, okay? Not adenoma, adenoma with N. So this one, there. This is an intraoral clinical manifestation of pleomorphic adenoma. So it can, it can be ulcerated and infected. Histopathological features um, will show us a well-circumscribed encapsulated tumor with mixed cure of granular epithelium and myopathelial cells within a mesenchyme-like background. There are numerous myopathelial cells that are rounded and demonstrate an eccentric nucleus and n a eosinophilic hyaluronized cytoplasm, thus resembling plasma cells. So, dito sa part na to, tandaan natin yung myoepithelial cells are rounded and demonstrate an eccentric, eccentric nucleus. Eccentric meaning wala sa gitna yung nucleus niya. Okay, so this is actually a description of plasma cytoid cells. Okay, rounded eccentric nucleus with eccentric nucleus this ayana makita nyo thus resembling plasma cells kaya siya tinawag na plasma cytoid cells kasi mukhang plasma cells okay so on a low magnification this is how a pleomorphic adenoma would look like there On a higher magnification, makikita natin dito, numerous plasmacytoid cells. Kita nyo? These are myoepithelial cells, pero yung nucleus nila nasa gilid. Yan, eccentric, eccentric, sabi nga, di ba? Kaya mukhang plasma cells sila. That's why they are plasmacytoid cells. Okay, so this is a very pathognomonic of pleomorphic adenoma. Histopathologically. The treatment for, for pleomorphic adenoma is surgical excision. Sometimes, if the parot parotid is affected, parotidectomy with preservation of the facial nerve is done. It also needs to be excised down to the periosteum. Kasi, there are cases that pleomorphic adenoma can transform into a malignant type, Sabi, um, which is called the carcinoma X. Pleomorphic, pleomorphic adenoma. So, ibig sabihin, carcinoma arising from pleomorphic adenoma. Kaya, ex pleomorphic adenoma. Okay? Second of the benign salivary gland tumor is the warthin tumor. It is the second most common benign parotid tumor. It shows clinically, uh, it's, it presents itself clinically as a slow-growing Painless nodular mass, maybe firm or flat to one, to palpation. And this occurs bilaterally at different and maybe at different types, times. It occurs in older adults, six to seven decades of life. So nasa 51 to 69 years old. Yeah. It has a male predilection, and this is the only um salivary gland. Ah, no, no. This is the salivary gland tumor associated with cigarette smoking. 
Mamaya pala yung umiwi. Okay. Yan. This is a working tumor in the parotid. Okay, so working tumor is also known as papillary cystadenoma, cystadenoma lymphomatosum. Okay, again, it is also a mixture of ductal epithelium. No, it's not also. It is a mixture of ductal epithelium and lymphoid stroma. Forms uniform rows of cells surrounding cystic spaces. It has a cells, and cells have abundant, finely granular eosinophilic cytoplasm arranged in two cell layers. Okay? Sabi ko kanina, ang wartin tumors ay kakaiba. Bakit? Kasi this is the only saliva reglan tumor that has associate as an association with the lymphoid stroma or lymphocytes. Okay? Well, hindi mo na mahanap sa ibang saliva reglan tumors ito. Itong lymphoid stroma na ito. Okay? Kasi yung pleomorphic adenoma kanina, it's a mixture of ductal epithelium and um, myoepithelial um, cells. <coughs> but this one is a mixture of ductal epithelium and lymphoid stroma. Let's look further. Dang. So, important thing malaman nyo dito is meron tayong um, epithelial cells, columnar cells, polygonal cells, lining epithelium cells, kasama niya ang to, supported by a lymphoid stroma that is frequently show, that frequently shows germinal center formation. Okay. So, dito nyo lang sa wartin tumor makikita yun. Yan. So, these are the salivary gland set cells. And makikita nyo ito, mga to. These are the lymphoid stroma. So, may, itong, itong isang germinal cell na to, isang germinal center na to, germinal center na yun, germinal center yun. Okay? On a close, closer look, Makikita nyo ito. Yan. Meron tayo yung mga ductal tissues natin or ductal cells natin. Nandiyo nagkaroon ng hindi maganda arrangement. Plus, supported sila ng oh, lymphoid stroma. These are all lymphocytes. Yun. So, ito yung kakaiba sa mga Orton's tumor. And this is also associated with secret smoking. Okay? The treatment for this one is surgical removal of the salivary gland. Local resection with minimal surrounding tissue is recommended. Um, superficial parotidectomy can also be done. Of course, we need a regular follow-up visit for patients with Orton's tumor. So that is the two most common benign salivary gland tumors. We can now proceed with the malignant salivary gland tumors. We also have two in this lecture. The first one is the mucoepidermoid carcinoma. This is the most common salivary gland malignancy. It can occur in a wide age range, age range from second to seven decades. And ito po ang pinakakumon na malignant salivary gland tumor sa mga, sa mga bata, sa mga chikting. And this is also the most common in the parotid gland. At first, it appears asymptomatic swelling. Pero, pag develop yan ng pain or facial nerve palsy. Sometimes, mag-iiba din yung kulay niya. It can also become blue or red. Minsan, nagkakaroon ng intraosseous mucoepidermoid type. Yan. So, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na magiging bluish or purplish yung kulay. So, pag nakakita ko ng ganyan, Isa sa pwede niyo maisip as differential diagnosis ay yung mucoepidermoid carcinoma. So pathologically, it is a mixture of mucous cells and squamous cells. Yung squamous cells, those are co also called as epidermoid. Okay, so meron tayong tatlong cells na makikita dito sa mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Unang-una, yun yung mucous cells. Pangalawa, epidermoid cells. And lastly, Intermediate cells. Mucoid cells vary in shapes and these are all foamy, uh, uh, contain, these, are, these, are, these all contain abundant foamy cytoplasms 
and stains positively with mucin stains. Kasi nga, these cells produce mucus or mucin. Next cell type is the epidermoid cell type, characterized by squamoid features, often demonstrating a polygonal shape, intercellular bridges, and rarely keratinization. Keratinization kasi there are still the epithelial cells. These are still epithelial cells. The third type of cell is the intermediate cell. This vary in appearance. Pwede yung small basaloid, which um, they think is the maternal cells for mucopidermic carcinoma, to slightly larger ovoid cells, which can fail eosinophilic cytoplasm. So it's, it's a hybrid of epidermoid cells and mucous cells. So yan. This is on a lower magnification. On a higher magnification, we will see cells like this one. These are an example of so, ito, mucopidermoid cells. Ito, uh, mucous cells. Ito yung mga ito. Yan. Itong cytoplasm niya is napuno na siya ng mucus. This is the nucleus. And the surrounding other cells are the epidermoid cells. Okay, yan. So, may iba dito na medyo kapag hindi tayo sure kung mucus cells sila or epidermoid, that means there are the intermediate cells. Okay. So, ganito niya malalaman kung mucus epidermoid carcinoma siya. Meron siyang mucus cells and meron siyang epidermoid cells. Sometimes intermediate. Okay. Minsan, malalaman din natin. No? Meron tayong tinatawag na low grade and high grade. Yun. Low grade and high grade. Sa mucopidermoid carcinoma, pag sinabing low grade, mas madami yung proportion ng mucous cells. Mas madami kang makikita ng mucous cells. So the, the, the more mucous cell there is, yun ay low grade na mucopidermoid carcinoma. However, magiging high grade siya kapag mas madami yung um, epidermoid cells. Konti yung mucus epidel. Pag konti lang yung mucus producing cells at mas madami yung epidermoid cells, yung squamous cells, high grade siya. Okay? Minsan naman, pwedeng maging intermediate grade kapag equal yung um, proportion ng mucus cells epidermoid grade, ah, uh, epidermoid cells. That means, nasa intermediate grade siya. Okay? So we have low grade, high grade, intermediate grade. Low grade, mas madami mucus cell. High grade, mas madami epidermoid cells. And intermediate grade, kapag parehas lang yung amount nila. Yan. Naskip ko pala kanina. So again, this is a mucus cell. These are muco, uh, this is a mucus cell. These are epidermoid cells. So the treatment for mucoepidermoid carcinoma is dependent on the location, is the pathologic grade and clinical stage of the tumor. If it's early stage, subtotal parotidectomy with preservation of facial nerve can be done. However, kung advanced na yung stage ng no, mucoepidermoid carcinoma, total removal na at masasacrifice na natin yung facial nerve. So mawawalan na siya ng feeling dun sa side na wala ng facial nerve. Okay? Pwede din naman kapag submandibular glands naman tumor, total removal naman ng gland. Also, kapag minor salivary glands, total surgical excision naman ang gagawin. Okay, so it's really dependent on the location, histopathologic grade, and clinical stage of the tumor. Okay? And treatment based on the grading, yun na, low grade, only a modest margin of surrounding normal tissue may be need to be removed. A high grade, wider resection. If there is underlying bone destruction, bone must also be excised. Indicated ang neck dissection for patients with evidence of metastasis. Okay? Whether it can it is low grade or high grade, as long as there is metastasis, kailangan na ng neck dissection. And after that, post-operative radiation therapy may also be used. May also be used. Okay. Again, and the uh, advantage and disadvantage of radiation therapy 
is yung occurrence ng mucositis. Okay? So next of the malignant salivary gland tumor and the last for this lecture is the adenoid cystic carcinoma. Clinical features of adenoid cystic carcinoma um, in, ito, kasama to. The most common site for minor salivary tumors of, of IBCC is palate. Um, if not minor salivary glands, it is mostly found in the parotid and submandibular glands. Usually, adenoid cystic carcinoma are most common in middle-aged adults. It is very rare in people younger than age 20. And it appears as slowly growing mass. However, for adenoid cystic carcinoma, there is pain associated. This is the most common, this is a common and important finding in adenoid cystic carcinoma, the pain. Okay. Patients often complain of a constant low-grade dull ache, which is gradually increases in intensity. Kasi meron tong perineural invasion ng adenoid cystic carcinoma. And it, it can also cause facial nerve paralysis. Palatal tumors can be smooth surface or ulcerated. Okay. And if the tumor arises in the palate or maxillary sinus, it can often show radiographic evidence. This, an, this is a clinical appearance of a adenocystic carcinoma. So it looks like a smooth um, lesion. Okay. Histopathologic features would include mixture, mixture of myoepithelial cells and ductal cells that can have varied arrangements. There are three major patterns, metatlong patterns, the cribiform, the tubular, and the solid. Usually, it is a combination of these are seen. Hindi naman alone yung cribiform, hindi mag-isa yung tubular or solid. solid. Makikita at makikita nyo na combination na meron tayo when it comes to adenoid cystic carcinoma. May combination ng cribiform, tubular, and solid. Yan. So these are um, the detailed um, description of the patterns. For cribiform pattern, this is the most classic and the best recognized appearance. Pag narinig nyo yung Swiss cheese appearance, isa lang ibig sabihin nun. Cribiform pattern of adenoid cystic carcinoma. Okay? We also have tubular pattern and solid variants. A highly characteristic feature of adenoid cystic carcinoma is its tendency to show perineural invasion. Sabi ko nga kanina, may perineural invasion, kaya nakakafil si patient ng pain and facial nerve paralysis. Ayan. So, kung makikita nyo, it really looks like a Swiss cheese. Mukha siyang cheese. Yung appearance niya. These are microcysts, microcyst, microcyst. These are all tumor cells. Yung mga yan. Ayan. Yung mga yan are, are all tumor cells. Yan. Yan. There. There. So, yung mga microcysts na to will somehow, um, yan, sila yung nagiging cause kung bakit nagmumuha siyang Swiss cheese appearance. Okay, so, kapag Swiss cheese appearance, it's only adenoid cystic carcinoma. The treatment for this one is local, um, is surgical resection. And be careful because there is local recurrence and distant metastasis. Okay? So sometimes, adjuvant, adjuvant radiation therapy may slightly improve patient survival with adenoid cystic carcinoma. Okay? So we will now move on to the third category third, uh, for this lecture, the special topic. And special topic for this one is the Sjogren's, Sjogren's syndrome. Sjogren's syndrome is a systemic autoimmune disorder that involves the salivary and lacrimal glands. These syndromes result in serostomia or dry mouth and seroptalmia or dry eyes. The effects on eyes are called keratojunctivitis zika. Zika means dry. The clinical presentation of serostomia and seroptalmia is called the zika syndrome. Dry syndrome. Sabi kanina, zika means dry. So, pag pinag-combine mo yung serostal, serostomia at saka yung seroptalmia, 
It is called the Zika syndrome. There are two forms of this disease, the primary Sjogren's syndrome, which is not associated with autoimmune disorder, or the secondary Sjogren's syndrome, which is associated with autoimmune disease disorder. Okay, so primary Sjogren's syndrome, secondary Sjogren's syndrome. Clinical features, this is common in females with a one, nine is to one female to male ratio and usually on the middle age patient. The, uh, the principal oral symptoms of Sjogren's syndrome is oral dryness or serostomia. Okay? So the patient, magrareklamo yan na nahihirapan sa paglunok, nag-alter yung taste niya, and minsan yung mga denture wearer, nahihirapan silang isuot yung denture nila kasi masakit dahil walang saliva. Okay? The tongue can also become fissured and exhibit atrophy of the, of the papilla. There is also redness of the oral mucosa. Yan. So magkakaroon ng denture sore mouth and angular cellulitis kasi kulang nga yung saliva ng patient. And patients with Sjogren's syndrome, syndrome are predisposed to having dental decay. Mas madami silang... Um, dental decay or caries. Mas lumalaki din yung major saliva reglan nila. Mas umuumbok. And to confirm whether a um, patient has a Sjogren's syndrome, we can use Schirmer's test to confirm decreased tear secretion. So clinically, yan. Nag-dry na. Nang reddish ang erythematous ng tongue. Minsan may enlargement of the saliva reglan. And this one is the Schirmer's, Schirmer's test. So to, to know whether um, dry yung eyes. So kapag hindi umabot ng, I think, one centimeter, yung basa dun sa paper, sasabi natin na this patient has a serostomia. But this one, bilang one centimeter siya, I think, walang Schrogen syndrome si patient. So, meron lang siyang cytostomia or dry mouth. So, the treatment for this one is mostly supportive. Kapag sa dry eyes, paggamit ng artificial tears. Pag sa dry mouth or cytostomia, artificial salivas. Pwede din nang bigyan si patient ng sugarless gums or candies. Minsan, pinapa-take si patient or pinapa-mouthwash si patient na sa yalogog medications like pilocarpine and sivimeline. Okay. I-avoid lang dapat ng patient no, na, mag, na mag in, nagkaroon ng intake ng mga medication na pwedeng magpapagpapaba sa secretion ng salivary gland at saka ng lacrimal gland. And kailangan din na meron daily fluoride application kasi nga, patients with Sjogren's syndrome has, are predisposed to caries. And of course, kailangan din may antifungal therapy kasi pwedeng magkaroon ng fungal infection si patient dahil wala nga sa saliva na nagiklean or nagiklense ng loob ng bibig niya. Kaya kailangan may antifungal therapy din. And I think that is the last cell slide. That's, that was the last, this is the last slide for this lecture. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you also had as, as insight on salivary gland tumors. May it be benign or malignant. So thank you for listening.